Doing well. You covered the Apsigami Holy Spirit game yesterday. We had head coach Steve Normain of the Spartans on earlier on. Obviously a tough day for Holy Spirit, and it was a tough day because Matt Ardente was on the hill for the Braves. Obviously a special talent in the Cape Atlantic League. One of those shutdown pitchers also hit a home run yesterday. You know, how impressed were you with Ardente's performance? Well, obviously, you know, I hadn't, uh, obviously he's going to Seton Hall University, and I, and I had never really seen him pitch before yesterday. Uh, so went out there to obseek it, and, and uh, I was very impressed. It was his 18th birthday, and he, and he had himself quite a celebration, as I wrote in today's paper. Uh, you know, three-run home run, uh, throws a, a one-hitter, uh, doesn't allow any runs for five innings. Very economical pitcher. You know, he struck out six, got a lot of ground ball outs, uh, you know, really jammed hitters, kept them off balance. You know, uh, I think when Absigami throws Matt Ardenti out there, you know, uh, they can compete with any team in South Jersey Group 3. For whatever reason, Absigami, maybe not one of the teams you think of when you, when you throw out some Cape Atlantic League contenders, but, you know, they made a little bit of noise last year in the playoffs. They returned a lot of key guys from that team a year ago, you know, What's the ceiling for this team this year? Is this a team we could be talking about again, you know, a couple rounds into the playoffs later on this spring? Well, I, I think so, especially with our Denti on the mound. I think this was a big week for them. They started off the week with the loss to Mainland Regional, a two-run loss, and then they come back and they beat Egg Harbor Township and they beat Holy Spirit. So now they're four and three, and, you know, with some momentum, they're almost set up for the rest of the season. If they had lost those EHT uh, and Holy Spirit games, they could have been two and five. But if they split them, they would have been three and four, and and really kind of you know uh, all but eliminated from the conference race, even though it's early in the season, and and kind of struggling for a decent seat in the playoffs. So they really responded, you know, coming back from that mainland loss with some impressive wins over EHT and Holy Spirit to give themselves some momentum going forward for the rest of the season. Then the other side of that coin yesterday, obviously Holy Spirit and. You know, head coach Steve Normain, pretty upbeat about his team. They are very young this year, but we're used to seeing Holy Spirit, again, sort of at the top of the Cape Atlantic League, but it's a different-look team this year, very young. You know, did you see some things yesterday that could be some encouraging signs for Spirit moving forward? Oh, absolutely. I thought they pitched three sophomore pitchers, and although Absicami scored eight runs, I thought in spots all three sophomore pitchers, uh, you know, showed some impressive things in their outings. You know, I know they – we're down eight nothing. They 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 didn't stop playing. They came back, got three runs in the top of the sixth inning, put some hits together. So that shows a little, you know, a little grittiness, a little determination there. And they're just a very young team. Like I said, they threw three sophomores. I think they started a, a freshman at catcher. They've got a sophomore at shortstop, a sophomore at third base. I believe they had a sophomore in right field. When you're that young, it's tough to compete against the older teams in the Cape Atlantic League, uh, American Conference. But the experience. The Spartans are getting this year, you know, uh, will prove valuable the next two seasons. Checking in right now with Mike McGarry from the Press of Atlantic City on the South Jersey Sports Report. Mike, another big game this week. We have to go back a few days. I believe it was Monday, but you covered it out in Richland. It was Ocean City versus St. Augustine. And St. Augustine, I think people coming into that game may be the favorite. Obviously, two of the better teams in the Cape. But all of a sudden, Sean Mooney's on the bump for the Red Raiders, and he had quite a day for Ocean City. Yeah, Sean Mooney with 15 strikeouts in that game uh, goes the distance, throws, I believe it was a three-hitter or a four-hitter, and Ocean City wins 5-1. And really one of those games that, you know, um, you know, Ocean City has had a very good baseball program the past four or five seasons. You know, I think they've won a South Jersey title. They've been to a state final. They've been to another South Jersey final. And we've heard about Mooney. You know, he's a kid who committed, you know, I believe before his sophomore season to go to St. John's on a, on a baseball scholarship. But I think that game really sort of opened up some eyes and sort of raised Ocean City to another level. I think coming in, people had questions about Ocean City. They played in the National Conference last year. How are they going to do in the American Conference against the bigger schools in the Cape Atlantic League? And then I think, you know, they got off to, uh, I think they won one game, and then they went down to Florida and dropped two of three down there. Uh, Apparently they played very good competition down there. But still, they came back with a 2-2 and record. So I think the jury was kind of out on the Ocean City baseball team. Well, it came in Monday on both the Red Raiders and Mooney, and, uh, you know, with a very good verdict. Both were impressive, and I think that type of win, and and especially since Ocean City was able to follow it up with some, uh, I believe, one or two more victories this week, you know, I I think Ocean City kind of raised itself to another level as far as South Jersey baseball goes with this past week. 
and at least size wise, you know, Mooney, not your prototypical division one prospect, a little bit smaller in stature, but the kid throws really hard, you know, and, and again, we forget he's still just a junior. Do you see him continuing to improve, you know, mixing his pitches up? And he really had, uh, excuse me, St. Augustine off balance the other day. Yeah, well, I, I mean, why not see him getting better? I mean, I think he threw hard yesterday, uh, that game. There was no radar gun there, but in talking to people, I think, you know, people said he was maybe have been in the high 80s to low 90s, and he beat a very good pitcher, and, and Billy Chilari is headed to Duke, so that's a battle of two Division One pitchers out there, and he beat a very good lineup, so, you know, I, I was really impressed with uh, with Sean Mooney. I think it was the second time I've seen him pitch in his career, and, uh, you know, only a junior, so you would think there's obviously some room to improve right there. Then the other side of that coin, St. Augustine comes away with the loss there. They bounced back yesterday with a win over one of their rivals, Millville. Mike Vastoria on the hill in that one, and he's one of a handful of pitchers there, Mike, as you know, for the Hermits that can really get it done. A junior, a Maryland commit. I think he scattered three hits yesterday against the Thunderbolts. So, obviously, that loss, you know, not weighing too heavy on the Hermits as they go right back to taking care of business later in the week. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's high school baseball and it's, uh, you know, it's very hard for high school baseball teams to go undefeated through the season, especially when you play the schedule that St. Augustine plays. They play a top non-conference schedule, and, and the conference is pretty good themselves. So they're going to get caught once or twice there. You know, I still think they're the team to beat as far as the Cape Atlantic League, League American Conference goes. I still think they're, uh, you know, one of the top teams in South Jersey. They have an interesting uh, test today. They're out of the... Hinkle tournament at Bishop Eustis. Bishop Eustis, another one of the top teams in South Jersey. So it'll be interesting to see what happens at the Hinkle tournament today over there in Pensacola at Bishop Eustis. And, you know, Mike Vistoria, I saw him pitch against Holy Spirit earlier in the season. In fact, I joked with uh, uh, the Holy Spirit coach that every time I, I come to see them play, there's a Division One pitcher on the mound against them. Uh, and I thought Vistoria, you know, really another economical pitcher, great curveball, you know, pitching depth, Vistoria, Chilari. I mean, not too many high school teams can boast the pitching depth that St. Augustine does, and that will serve them well as the season goes on. That Hermits win over Millville actually two days ago yesterday, St. Augustine beating Oakcrest by a final of 11-1. to Another big game, at least in my mind, Mike, this week, and I know you weren't there, but obviously you know about it. It was Buna against ACIT. The game was in Buna, and this is an ACI team, ACIT team excuse me, that we've talked about a little bit, sort of an upstart team, and you know, they get their first real test on the road against the Chiefs. Now, Buna comes away with a 3-1 win, but obviously gives you a sense of, of maybe how close some teams are in the Cape Atlantic League. Buna, a reigning state champion, ton of talent back. ACIT almost off the radar for years, and now they're competing with one of those sort of quote-unquote top teams. Yeah, I think ACIT's got to take a little, uh, you know, a, a little uh, positivity out of that game. Obviously, being able to hang in there with Buna, I think Buna Regional had a uh, had a good week for themselves. Uh, you know, they beat ACIT, they come back and beat Cedar Creek yesterday. Those are kind of two teams that kind of emerged as uh, sort of contenders for them, or uh, in uh, the Cape Atlantic League National Conference. And I guess the other team that's kind of emerged in that National Conference now is, is St. Joe with uh, CJ Lafragola, who hit three home runs yesterday in a win over Lower Cape May. So you know, uh, you see these teams sort of emerge. Uh, from the Cape Atlantic League National Conference to challenge Buna. So far, Buna has answered the challenge, beating ACIT, beating Cedar Creek, and I guess St. Joe is kind of now the team that will take a shot at Buna next. Mike, I want to switch gears a little bit here, and I apologize if I catch you off guard, but uh, you know, I teased it at the end of last week's show, and it's really not new news this week. The stuff's been going on, but I know you're pretty much in tune with the possible rule changes with the NJSIAA. Help us break down right now what's going on with both wrestling and football it has to do a lot with the non-public teams we'll start with football you know what's the proposal what's going on there it could mean i guess down the line some changes for some area non-publics right the proposal in football is um right now what's probably going to end up happening is every school in the state that is in the njsaa will be able to vote in december uh this coming december at the njsa's general membership meeting on whether or not for the public and non-public schools to have separate league. So if that were to go through, basically Holy Spirit, St. Joe, and St. Augustine would leave the Cape Atlantic League, and the Cape Atlantic League would be all public schools. The non-public and public schools would still be able to schedule, you know, regular season non-conference games. So 
uh, in theory, the Holy Spirit Atlantic City rivalry could still exist. They could still schedule that game on Thanksgiving. But that would be the proposal. Now, what the non-public leagues look like, what would the makeup, would it be a South Jersey league? Would St. Joe be playing teams from North Jersey? Would, uh, you know, Holy Spirit be playing teams from North Jersey? Would St. Augustine be in a league with Don Bosco, Prep, and Paramus Catholic? Uh, you know, no one knows at this point. Uh, they have not put any specifics as to what those leagues would look like. But the proposal is for, uh, you know, the public and non-public schools to go their separate way for football, and that vote will come in December. And if it's approved, it would take effect for the 2016 season. All right, so we're talking about a little time, you know, obviously between now and the vote and between now and when it would take effect. Do you get a sense one way or the other which way that thing could go, or it's just too, you know, challenging to guess at this point? Well, I think it's going to be a very close vote. I think I think in North Jersey where you have the Paramus Catholics, the Don Boscos, the Bergen Catholics, the St. Peter's Preps really dominating the scene up there, I think there's some votes in, in North Jersey – from the, you know, the public schools, and, and let's face facts, the majority of high schools in this state or in North Jersey, you know, would probably vote for it. From what I understand, the Shore Conference, which it really does not have, um, you know, uh, they have Red Bank Catholic and St. John Vianney starting to, to grow, but they're kind of happy with their football arrangement. From what I understand, the Shore Conference is about 40, 45 schools, kind of likes the way it is. And from what I understand, South Jersey kind of leans uh, towards the way it is right now themselves, although, you know, um, who knows? I think the feeling from the South Jersey uh, parochial schools, such as Paul the Sixth and Bishop Eustace, is, you know, they would be, they would be uh, being thrown into a non-public league, uh, basically to solve a problem created by five non-public schools in, in, in North Jersey. So I think the feeling of some of these South Jersey parochial schools is, hey, why are you forcing us to sort of change our whole football program, our rivalries, our games? You know, why are you putting us in another league? We're not the problem. It's the schools in North Jersey that are the problem. So do something about those. So, you know, I, I don't know which way the vote would go at this point. You know, I think some people assume you get a lot of publicity about non-public public, but it would, it would automatically pass. But I think it's going to be very close. And before we let you go, Mike, what about wrestling? Is there still a vote proposed? Is that still on the horizon that basically, I guess what it is at the district and regional level, you would separate the non-public kids, have them go just up against one another and then create extra spots at the state tournament? Is that basically what's going on there? Right. That would be the proposal there. So the non-public kids would be out of the individual, the public school districts and, and regions and you would basically create extra spots in Atlantic City for them. I guess it would be akin to creating another district and another region, but this would be for all the non-public kids of the state. So, I mean, I can see that one probably going through, uh, you know, because I think what they would, what you could argue there is that, you know, in every other sport, the public and non-public kids sort of go their separate ways until they come to a sort of meet of champions sort of scenario. Like in, like in track and field, it's, it's public school group championships, you know, uh, public school sectional championships, and then they meet at the meet of champions. So, you know, I, I think that one will probably pass. The timetable for that vote, is it similar to the football vote? We're talking December and then it wouldn't take effect for a couple of years? Uh, I think this one, this is all going to sort of wash out in the um, the next couple of uh, the next couple of months. The NJSA Executive Committee, they're going to look at this. The football one is definitely one that's going to be voted on in December. The wrestling one, and then the transfer rule, the transfer rule, which kind of would make some transfers sit uh, 30 days and be banned from the state tournament uh, if they transfer to an open enrollment school. Those things will be discussed by the Executive Committee in May and June, and at that point the Executive Committee can either approve them or they can say we want the general membership to vote on it in December. So that those decisions of regarding the wrestling and the transfers you know, will be made in the next two months. All right, your official NJSIAA insider, Mike McGarry, from the press <laughs> of Atlantic City. Mike, appreciate the time. As always, enjoy uh, whatever you're covering today on this beautiful day, and uh, we'll catch up with you again next week. Right, about to leave in a few minutes for the uh, Woodbury Relays. Uh, always a great event and, and uh, coverage in tomorrow's taper. Thanks for a few minutes, Mike. All right, thank you. Mike McGarry, press of Atlantic City, helping us break down some storylines in the high school baseball.